Now, another major development today is the arraignment of embattled Senator Elisha Abo. Now, ever since a CCTV footage emerged showing the senator assaulting a woman in a sex toy shop, and there's been widespread outrage across the country and even outside, with people calling for the prosecution of the lawmaker. Now, even though he has apologized, the case has been taken to court. And today, after he was arraigned at an Abuja magistrate court, he was granted bail to the tune of 5 million naira with two charities. So let's get into some of the you know, broader implication of this issue. And we have joining us from our Abuja studio a lawyer, Mr. Aliu Abdullahi, as well as Senator Shehu Sonny, a former lawmaker in the 8th Assembly. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us on the program. Now, I... I Thank you. Okay, now, I understand that he's in court, the case is in court now, so we're not here to pronounce whether he's guilty or not. But we're trying to look at the, you know, broader implication of this issue. So I'll begin with uh, Senator Sonny. This issue has been on for a while with a lot of people sharing their thoughts. But then another issue is the conduct of perhaps elected officials and lawmakers in the country. Surely this is not good for the image of lawmakers. What is your opinion? Uh, thank you again for having me here. Uh, well, first and foremost, when you are elected into an esteemed position of authority, you are expected to behave and to conduct yourself with decorum, with decency, and with discretion. Because you represent an institution, you represent a people, and you should be symbolic of a man of honor and integrity. Now, what the senator did has crossed the line of that issues, which I've raised. And it is in order that the law should take its course. But on the other hand also, there is the requirement that the institution of the National Assembly themselves uh, take action because it is one of their own. Okay. And he has been involved in things like this. Senator Sonny, and, uh, Senator Sonny if I may at this point, message. because of our time, this is something we'd like to get into right after the break. It's interesting you have mentioned the role of the National Assembly. And I would like you to land, but we'll have to take a break uh, briefly. And when we return, we'll continue in this line of thought, especially the role of the National Assembly, the institution of the National Assembly, in ensuring that issues such as this are resolved the right way. Stay with us. So welcome back to the program. Now we're staying with a controversy generated by the assault case involving embattled lawmaker Senator Elisha Abo and the broader conversation of the conduct of lawmakers or elected officials in the country. So let's rejoin our guest in our Abuja studio. We have Mr. Aliu Abdullahi, a lawyer, uh, joining us to give us his perspective. And right next to him is Senator Sunny uh, Sheo, who also joined us from Abuja. He's a former lawmaker in the Eighth Assembly. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for staying with us. Now, uh, Senator Sonny, before we went on the break, you were talking about the role of the National Assembly, the institution of the National Assembly. So the question is, what does the standing rule say about, you know, conduct such as this? Uh, well, first of all, as I was making the point that the conduct of the Senator challenges the moral status of the National Assembly and also stains the gavel of the Senate. And it is incumbent on the Senate themselves to take an action that will restore that confidence in the side of the people and also that will penalize the very person that was involved in order to save the image and the integrity of the National Assembly. So the rules of the Senate as it is in the rules book, uh, such conduct is uh, very much uh, abhorred, uh, condemned, and an action needs to be taken by the National Assembly to show that uh, the whole members of the National Assembly does not in any way endorse or accept or embrace what was done by the Senator. Uh, that gives a clear impression right. of their objection to it and also uh, will send a message that uh, this is a place of men of honor and if you are to be here, uh, there are certain standards of responsibility and conduct that you need to adhere to in order to remain 
as an elected lawmaker here. Right. Now, um, Mr. Abdullahi, like, as we said earlier, this is not us pronouncing him guilty or otherwise. I mean, this is about a broader, a broader implication of, you know, governance, responsibility, and, I mean, it goes on and on. Now, we understand that lawmakers do not have immunity like the president or governor, so they can be prosecuted. But then we're, we're, we're trying to find out the implication of, for example, the membership of a lawmaker in the National Assembly when issues like this arise. So the question is, people have said there's a recall process. I mean, Senator Sonny has talked about the, the standing rules. But then what's your view of this? Well, thank you, Kairi. Thank you for having me. Uh, I think there are three issues here. Uh, each distinct from the other, from the other two. First, you are talking about the issue of prosecution, which is already before the court for the crime, for the offense of assault. Then we are talking about also the court of ethics, you know, from his colleagues at the National Assembly, what the rule book said, you know. Uh, I think I've had the Senate president uh, actually ordered an investigation into the matter. The Committee on Ethics will report back to the uh, plenary house and then maybe they will make certain recommendations and then the Senate will be at liberty, the leadership of the Senate, to say, okay, these are the kind of penal uh, 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 penalty or so we wish we will issue to this uh, uh, Aaron Senator. That's one. Then the third angle that you're talking about, the recall process, another issue entirely different. Now this is left to his constituency members, you know. The recall process is spelled out in the constitution, you know, what to do, you know, to recall a seven uh, member of the National Assembly. It's a very difficult task. It's not, um, it's not impossible. Um, has he lost the confidence of the people he represented? Now that's the question only his constituency will answer, and the process is spelled out. Perhaps they may take that route, uh, but we have seen in very recent time uh, when the, uh, another senator, you know, that uh, his people decided to take that road and uh, how cumbersome the procedure was. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it was, uh, it was not successful. So there are three measures here. But uh, I would have loved to talk a little bit about, um, you know, the issue of the first one, the first leg, that's the prosecution angle. Uh, don't forget what the prosecutor needs at this time. Um, he needs to prove also beyond reasonable doubt because this is a, a, criminal, process, a, a criminal trial. And uh, we have had, we have seen, evidence acts will come into play, whether what is being bandied uh, in the social media will be admissible in court. You know, that is one area. And also admission. Has the senator admitted to doing wrong? Uh, and then the crime of assault, you know, is something that, uh, I mean, it has some elements that needs to be probed. Number one, the mental element and the physical one. The physical one doesn't actually, the, 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 you don't have to touch someone before an assault can be proven. Right. Even if you shine a light on the person of someone, which will cause a reasonable apprehension, you know, fear right. in that, on that person. People, you, you can't say to have committed the act of assault physically. Mr. Abdullahi. To the mental element. Mr. Abdullahi, I, 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 I see a it's trend here. Mr. Abdullahi, just a moment. I, I see you're taking us to law school. It's understandable. I mean, I'm taking notes already. So I appreciate that. But then I'd like to also ask uh, Senator Sonny uh, briefly. Now, the question is, he has talked about, you know, the role of the constituency. That's the people lawmakers represent. And then a big topic is how people can actually participate in this lawmaking process. I mean, you have elected a lawmaker. It doesn't mean you should sit down and just expect things to move as you imagine it. You should be a part of it. So the question is, how do these people that are being represented, how can they be a part of the representation process, especially for the Ninth Assembly? Well, um, what has always been the norm and the culture is that... Um, the civil society uh, must organize themselves in order to pursue causes, objectives, and goals that specifically has to do with uh, the conduct of the parliamentarians or the conduct of the institution of the National Assembly itself. And by doing that, they now become the monitors. They become those who oversight over those who oversight. Mm. So I think 
uh, have an interest in what your legislature do and what the institutions do every day will also be backed with uh, pursued goals and objectives that will clearly uh, send a message to those in the position of authority that the constituents, their people who elected them, are uh, always at the know of what they are doing. All right. Uh, so I'd like to just revert back to Mr. Ali Abdullahi. I'd just like to let you land final words before we call it a show today. Well, um, I would like to say this. Um, like I said earlier, the three options are available. I mean, each one, there are a group of actors that will pursue those uh, uh, mechanism or those processes, his constituency can do that. Uh, it's, it's difficult, but it's doable. And so, but we're very important. I, I agree with uh, Senator Shostani when he said the institution of the Senate has to send a message whether uh, this, whether they're in agreement or actually they condemn this uh, reprehensible act from right. one of their colleagues. And I think Nigerians will be looking at them to see what kind of judgment they will pass uh, with, in that regard. And they are totally different. They are within their right to do that. And it's totally uh, uh, unrelated to the criminal prosecution that is going on. They are not finding him guilty. But within their own rules, they are finding him wanting on that level. So which, which one supersedes the other, finally? Which one should what? Which one supersedes the other, the court or the National Assembly? Well, uh, they are all independent actions, actually, to be taken for, by different all right. actors. All right. You know, the prosecution, you know, prosecution in Nigeria, you know our administration of criminal justice system, how it is. You know, it can go on for a, for a long time. But this one, the action by the National Assembly, once they conduct, the, they finish their investigation, they, they don't have to really wait for the prosecution to end. They can make their own in, internal findings, and they can come out come up with a resolution. And I think the Senate's findings and their disciplinary mechanism or measures should precede the uh, uh, prosecution, although right. they have no bearing altogether. Mr. Abdullahi, thank you so much. We've been speaking to uh, Mr. Ali Abdullahi, a lawyer, and uh, Senator Sheil Sonny, a former lawmaker in the 8th Assembly. We'll just have to wait to see how this one pans out. Well, that's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Kaya Deo